Hey friends, my name is Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another bookmas video. Today I'm going to be talking about my most surprising reads of the year. If you don't know yet, bookmas is the time of year in December where I just talk about the best and the worst books of the year. I kind of wrap up my reading year and look ahead into the new year. I'm posting videos every few days. If you've missed a few, don't worry, there's a playlist down below that has all the previous videos and keep your eye out for more, obviously. But today's is the most surprising books of the year. I really enjoy sitting down and thinking about this because it kind of helps me assess how well I know my own reading. So what's interesting is that this year there actually weren't that many surprising reads. Either I've had a lot of disappointing reads, which the list is longer for disappointments to be fair, but I might also just know my reading taste better and only pick up things that I know I'm going to somewhat enjoy. I don't know, I thought that was kind of interesting that there's a lot less overall. I also have a few that I could have put on this list, but they're also favorites of the year, and I thought they'd obviously be better suited for that. I will mention those as like an honorable mention really quickly, but we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of the other ones a lot more in depth. So the two that are honorable mentions, because I will be talking about them in my favorites of the year video, the Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. The reason this was a surprise was because I hadn't loved her other books nearly as much as I loved this. So this was surprising in how much this stuck with me and how much I loved it. And the other one is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. This was a surprise because I just didn't know what to expect from this. And when I finished it, I don't know if it had the same impact that it does have on me now. This book has stuck with me throughout the whole year. I don't know why. I don't know what hold it's had on me, but it's become a favorite of all time and the kind of horror slice of life category almost. So this is one I really didn't expect. But now into some other reads. First one I wanna talk about is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is a dark academia classic. This is like the mother load of dark academia aesthetics and vibes. It is about a group of classic students at this liberal arts college that kind of slowly start to descend into madness. They're kind of sequestered from all the other students at this college because it is a very private, small program, the classics program. So they're kind of just dealing with their professor and each other all the time. And it kind of turns into murder and mayhem and madness. The reason I was so shocked by this was because this is a very polarizing book. A lot of people either love it or hate it. And it seems like a lot of people also don't quite understand it because it's so well done. I'll explain that in a second, but overall, because it's so polarizing, I didn't know where I was going to fall, but I think the more I sit with this book and kind of marinate in it, the more I realize what a well-crafted book this is. I feel like a lot of people that dislike it, and this is not like a blanket statement, but a lot of people that dislike it, especially from what I've seen on Book Talk, which is an interesting microcosm in itself, but a lot of people complain about the racism in this book and the homophobia. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't be bothered by, it, absolutely not. But to say that the book is inherently racist and homophobic because of those elements in a certain character is just really stupid to me. I'm sorry, like the point of this book was to criticize how white academia is, how very single-minded it is, and how it's not a very accepting place despite its supposed upholding of discussions and differing opinions. And so when people say, well, all the characters are white, it's like, yes, that's the point. All of these characters are, but they're also all terrible people. You're not supposed to like them or identify with them necessarily. They're not people that you want to root for. The one character who is racist, outwardly racist and homophobic, never gets checked by the other characters. You know that they are not good people either. And you actually are quite happy when some bad things happen to him. So it's kind of like, it's just funny that some of the negative reviews that I had going into this made me think it was going to be one thing. Whereas when I actually read it and thought about it, this book is incredibly well crafted. And that's why it was surprising is because I was made to believe by a lot of people that it was one thing and it's not. There are a lot of people who love the book and there are a lot of people who dislike it for more valid reasons, but I think critiquing it on the whole point of the book is just silly. So anyways, that's why this was surprising. I think there's clearly a lot of interesting content in this book thematically. There's a lot I could go on about for days because there's a lot packed into this. That's why it surprised me. The mixed reviews didn't help, but it just actually was a lot more insightful and interesting than I thought it was gonna be. Especially because it was lauded as like the mother load of dark academia aesthetic, but it was so much more than that. The next book I wanna talk about is Ray Bearer by Jordan Fuego. So this is a young adult fantasy about a girl who is kind of cursed from birth. She has to eventually grow up 
get close to the emperor in waiting and then kill him. This was just so unexpected because this was a book that Ray had picked for me during my game of tomes for one month. I had a card where a friend had to pick a book that they loved and I had to see how I felt about it and Ray had picked this one for me and I didn't know what to expect. It's not that I had low expectations going in, I just had none. I'd seen this book maybe a few times floating around on the bookish internet but not nearly enough people are talking about it. I also haven't really been keeping up with new young adult releases to be quite honest with you. New releases in general I'm very bad and this was a fairly new release so I kind of wasn't, it wasn't on my radar. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then I read it and I just absolutely fell in love. This was incredibly written. The writing was beautiful. The characters were so well done. Everything felt very whole and complete and just so real. But the fairy tale-esque tone of the writing at the same time just made it almost ethereal. So it felt like it could be real, like you could walk into this world, but it also kept you in the sense of wonder and whimsy because of the writing. And I just because I had no expectations, I was just absolutely blown away when I did read it. I would really recommend this book to absolutely everyone. I'm reading Redemptor currently and I'm really enjoying it. This duology is just so unique. I've never read anything like it. And if more young adult was like this, I would read it more because this was just spectacular. The next book I want to talk about is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This is a mystery about a woman who returns to her small hometown to investigate the disappearance and the murder of some really young girls, but she's also kind of harboring some secrets. There's a lot of history with her small town and her family, and things escalate very quietly, like it's not like a thriller but they escalate in this very unsettling way. The reason this was a surprise for me is because I did not like Gillian Flynn's most popular book, Gone Girl. I thought it was incredibly predictable and dull and I thought the characters were just not worth reading about for that long. But Sharp Objects really did something different. It had these really good unlikable female characters, kind of like Gone Girl, but it did them a lot better, I thought. I thought the relationships were just more complex. Gone Girl was just way too boring and kind of predictable and very surface level, but I thought that Sharp Objects had a lot more interesting things going on. I just thought that the pacing and the atmosphere worked a lot better for me. I thought that overall the story was just so eerie and not in a typical way that it's really kind of stuck with me. Like it's a book I would really recommend to a lot of people. I really quite enjoyed it and I would really like to pick up Dark Places now by her because of how much I enjoyed Sharp Objects. If I hadn't enjoyed Sharp Objects, I probably would not have picked up any more books by her. But because I really surprisingly enjoyed it, I think I'll read more from her because if more of her books are like sharp objects. Oh my God, she she has like talent. I don't know why it's Gone Girl that got like all the attention. I personally, I, I don't get it. Sharp Objects was phenomenal. If you haven't read it yet, if you like Southern Gothic, small town drama, weird familial relationships, you might really, really like Sharp Objects. And I really did. And the final book I wanna talk about is The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. So I picked this up because there was a book club that was reading through all the books uh, that Rory Gilmore read and Gilmore Girls. And I wanted to participate and this was the first book. I don't know what's happening with that club. If they're not doing it, I will, just saying. But um, they read this, this was one of their first picks. And I knew nothing about it going in, but I thought that the audiobook was short enough and I would just, you know, give it a listen, see what it's about. I ended up crying. <laughs> I was crying at the end of this. I related to it so much harder than I thought I would. This is a story about a woman whose mother dies and so the daughter decides to go to the Mahjong Club where she played every week with a bunch of other Chinese American immigrants. And they all just kind of get together. Like I said, they play Mahjong, but they also share stories, talk in Cantonese or Mandarin, I'm not sure. And like I said, they all get together and play Mahjong, but they also share some food and talk in their native tongue and kind of get to keep their culture a little bit and be surrounded in their culture, even though they live in America. And once she gets there, all of the other members of this club start telling her stories about her mother and and their own life experiences. And it's just so breathtakingly beautiful. The reason I did not expect to love it so much, like the reason I was surprised by this was because I had, again, no expectations going into it, but also it is a contemporary. It's a modern classic that's kind of much more normal than I would normally read, right? I don't read contemporaries or literary fiction that often. So this was really surprising to me in that this was so, powerful and even though a lot of it did involve the day-to-day -day life of Chinese American immigrants and their kids but like I just related to it as someone who is an immigrant myself and who lives with an immigrant mother and the expectations that they place on their children are just not normal. 
But in all seriousness, there was just a lot of really interesting thematic content that was just done beautifully. It wasn't forced down your throat, but it was just very incredibly well crafted. You just felt the themes kind of come to you, especially if you're like me and you can actually relate to it. It was just so well done, so emotional, so beautiful, so human, and I did not expect to fall in love with it. I'm sure most contemporaries or literary fictions are not like this, especially the more slice of life ones, but this had those elements of slice of life and some that were a bit more maybe historical, and altogether it just created this beautiful story, or maybe a collection of stories, almost more, because it was several people telling their experience with their kids and their experience as immigrants, and it was just, I don't know, I, between the writing, the way that I cried, the themes, everything just worked so perfectly in this, and I did not expect for it to have an impact on me like it did. I definitely didn't go into it expecting to cry, but I did, so there's that. Alrighty friends, that was it. That was my short and sweet list of books that really surprised me. I'm pretty sure there was more last year. There's a lot more books that disappointed me, so keep your eye out for that video. But for now, this was a bit more of a positive one. Um, and I'm not gonna have like worst books of the year. Most of them are just gonna be in the disappointing category. So keep your eye out for that and any other Bookmas videos. My social media is also linked down below if you guys wanna come talk to me there. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.